Hi everybody, my name is Brittany and this is Dorian and today I want to make a video about Exactly about where on the plane is the best place to sit with a baby window seat or aisle seat the bulkhead row At the front of the plane where you get a little bit more space or a regular row is the back of the plane better to sit with a baby or the front of the plane I surveyed 20 other traveling moms moms who travel with their toddlers and babies and asked them what they think about this but also I've taken 13 flights, yay, with Dorian in his first year of life. He's 13 months old almost, and we're about to go on, yay, we're about to go on a few more flights across Canada, um, and then transatlantic, so yay, so we want to make sure that we're picking the right seats, or like the most comfortable seats that we can. Are you hungry? I own mom. I own mom. Pretty much up to this point, if we had a choice, we've chosen the window and middle seat. Oh, you want me to stop talking? In my survey, I found that most other traveling moms agree with me. They also prefer the window seat, but there are some really good reasons to choose the aisle seat as well, and it might depend on your child's personality, what stage of development they're at, and their age. And let's just take a moment to acknowledge that the middle seat is not even an option. The middle seat is hands down the worst, and we're not even going to justify the middle seat as part of this conversation. I actually did almost get stuck with the middle seat when I was traveling solo with Dory. Is it time for a nap? Say bye-bye. Bye-bye. Nap time. Bye-bye. <laughs> nap time. So there are a few reasons why you might want to choose the window seat or the window and middle seat if you're traveling with someone with your lap baby. These are the reasons why the moms in my survey prefer the window seat and why I personally prefer the window seat as well. First of all, if you're breastfeeding, the window seat offers a bit more privacy than the aisle seat. And it's just a lot easier to use because you have something to lean up against. Especially in those early months when, at least for me as a new mom, I felt a little bit uncomfortable and I wanted a little bit more privacy and to be kind of covered up against the window, it just felt a little bit better for me personally. And I didn't have to worry about the beverage cart coming and bumping my baby in the head or bumping my arm or anything like that. I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> as your baby gets a little bit older and more interested in things, the window can serve as a really good distraction. So you can bring window clings if you want, let you know like little de decal or decorative window clings to put on the window so your baby can actually play with them. Or just as is, it's kind of fun, especially when you're getting, you know, kind of settled into your seat. Um, it's kind of a distraction for your baby to be able to look out the window. They also like to play with the, um, the window shade. If this video is helping you out so far, please don't forget to like it and subscribe to my channel for more family travel tips and tricks. Something I didn't even think of that another mom mentioned in this survey is that the window seat, the window seat has a little bit more space and it has that area uh, between the seat and the window where you can just kind of shove things. So shove like toys and blankets or whatever. It's kind of like an extra storage space. Uh -uh. Yeah. If and when hopefully your baby falls asleep on the plane and you're holding them, it's really nice to be able to lean against the window as well. Of course, the well-known con of the window seat is that if somebody is sitting in the aisle seat next to you guys, you're probably gonna have to disturb them a lot, ask them to move for you to go to the bathroom, to bring your baby to the bathroom to change them, um, just to get up so you can walk your baby up and down the aisles if your baby's crying. Um, so just plan on possibly disturbing the person sitting next to you. For some people, this is no problem at all. For other people, you might feel a little bit shy. Um, asking somebody to get up a lot. I don't know, what do you guys think? Are you the type of person who would be a little bit hesitant to disturb somebody? This was kind of a, a little bit of a, yeah, a little bit of a point of debate uh, with the moms that I spoke to. Okay, which brings me to the pros of the aisle seat. You don't have to ask anybody to move. You can get up whenever you want. This is especially useful for any kind of emergency. So if your baby pukes or has a blowout or just... <laughs> starts getting sad or fussy, you can get up right away if you need to. The aisle seat can also serve as a good distraction for baby because they can look around at all of the other people from the aisle seat. I know that when we've been in the aisle with Dorian, he really does love to, to kind of like interact with the people across the aisle from us. And 
all that good stuff. Okay, so major cons of the aisle seat though are sort of the pros of the window seat. The beverage cart can be kind of a danger to you and your baby if anything happens to get spilled, hot beverages, or the flight attendant's not paying attention and you get bumped. Heaven forbid your baby's head gets bumped. So sitting in the window seat, you don't have to worry about those things, obviously. Another big con of the aisle seat is that someone else is going to disturb you to get out of the seat to go to the bathroom. And that can be really a bummer when you have a baby because maybe your baby is content doing what they're doing or your baby is sleeping and you need to get up to let this person get out and go to the bathroom. Would you rather disturb or be disturbed? I feel like once you have a baby, you would rather be the disturber, perhaps. At least that's how I feel. Now this was interesting. Somebody in the survey said that American Airlines told them that babies, lap babies, are only allowed to sit in the aisle seat because that's the only seat with two oxygen masks. I'd never heard that before, so I don't know if, if anybody else has come across this. Let me know in the comments. Oh, and then another mom in my survey said that the company she flew with, she didn't mention the company's name, said that they had to be in the window seat with the baby because they wouldn't they wouldn't let them box in a stranger. Um, so they wouldn't give them the aisle seat. So it's so interesting. It really seems to depend on the airline that you go with. Hopefully you'll just get lucky and you'll have nobody sitting next to you and it doesn't matter, matter whether you choose the window seat or the aisle seat. You can just have the whole row to yourselves. Obviously that's the ideal situation in all of this. We have done the thing which I'm not sure if this is totally ethical or not. Yeah, I don't know if it's a good thing that we've done this, but where we've selected the middle seat, or sorry, the, sorry, <laughs> we've selected the window seat and the aisle seat, so the A seat and the C seat, just hoping that nobody would pick the middle seat, and um, it's worked. It's worked a few times for us, so we've ended up having the whole road to ourselves. Um, the assumption being that if somebody was placed in the middle seat between you, they would be very happy to switch with you because nobody wants the middle seat. So we're just talking about lap babies right now, so babies under two years old who can fly for free and just sit on your laps. We're not even talking about car seats. If you want to bring your car seat on board, there are some airlines that'll let you do that for free if there's an empty spot on the plane, but otherwise you'll have to pay for um, an extra seat to take your car seat on the plane with you. And I believe that most airlines require you to put the car seat next to the window. Okay, so now I want to talk about rows. Do you want to sit in a regular row with your baby or do you want to sit in the bulkhead row, which is that row at the... That's right, that's right. At the front of the plane, the row that has some extra space. So we've flown in this row once with Dorian and we really liked it. I think that the pros outweigh the cons personally. So let's just talk about the pros of a regular row first of all. In a regular row on a plane, you of course have the normal under seat uh, storage space in front of you for your carry-on bag and in a bulk bulkhead row you don't have that you don't have any storage so you'll have to put your carry-on bag including your diaper bag in the overhead bin until you're in the sky and the seatbelt sign has gone off that can be a little tricky if you need access to your diaper bag during takeoff we handled that by just like pulling out a diaper and wipes and whatever like toys or whatever we needed um, to have in our laps with the baby during takeoff, during that first 20 minutes or whatever, and it was fine. So some of the cons of sitting in a regular row, which you might have noticed if you've flown with your baby, are that the person in front of you can of course recline into you, a bulkhead row, you have nobody sitting in front of you, so that's not gonna happen. Um, when somebody reclines their seat and you have a baby in your lap, it can be pretty squished. Also in a bulkhead row, they sometimes offer a baby bassinet when you ask at the gate if they have that option available for you. We haven't used this, but my friend just used it on her transatlantic flight with her 11 month old and she said it worked out really great. In the bulkhead row, you generally have more space, more leg room. When we had the bulkhead row, Dory was about eight or nine months old and he was able to kind of crawl around a little bit more in front, um, so that was great. There's no one in front of you to worry about your baby disturbing or kicking the seat in front of them if they happen to be a little bit older babies, toddlers. Dory's kind of at an age now where he's kind of like pulling up the seat in front of him and maybe even like tapping the head of the people in front of 
with him, so that's something that we wouldn't have to worry about uh, in a bulkhead row. You're also closer to the flight attendants and the bathrooms in a bulkhead row, which is always very handy. And all of this is related to where on the plane you sit. So would you rather sit at the front of the plane or the back of the plane? When I first thought about this, I didn't think it really mattered. I didn't think I had a preference, but going over the pros and cons that some of the other moms brought up in this survey, I think personally, I would prefer the back of the plane. And that's because in the back of the plane, you don't really have an audience for when your baby is melting down, if that's something that's important to you. I personally feel when Dory's had a few like minor crying ac uh, accidents, a few crying episodes on the plane, he hasn't been too bad, but he's cried a little bit. I could feel a little bit of the pressure of lots of eyes on me at the front of the plane. So while the bulkhead is great being at the front of the plane, you do have more people looking at you. Some people aren't disturbed by this at all and that's great. That's how we should be, honestly. But if you are feeling a little bit uncomfortable about that being in the back of the plane, there are fewer people generally. Fewer people tend to choose the back of the plane and also just most people's eyes are facing forward so there aren't just aren't as many people to watch you with your baby having a meltdown. There's also generally more space in the back of the plane to walk around. There's sometimes that little galley area, I think it's called, back with the bathroom so you can sort of like bounce your baby around. Maybe it's a little bit darker on most planes and that might be helpful for getting your baby to sleep. So you'll be calmer because not so many people are looking at you. Your baby might be calmer with fewer people around and you'll have more space to walk around. This isn't always the case, especially on the little teeny tiny planes, but hopefully you'll get one that has some space on it. Now, depending on the policy of the airline, the back of the plane might be the last to board, definitely the last to deplane. So you will have to wait around longer on the plane, generally if you're sitting in the back. And if you're sitting at the front of the plane, you get to get off first, which is kind of cool. But here's where I think the boarding is not a big deal because I think the greatest strategy for boarding is to split up to have if you're if you're traveling with another person um, to have one person wait at the gate as long as possible with the baby to tire them out to do the last minute changes and feeding and to have the other parent take all of your stuff take advantage of the early boarding with children most airlines have this go on the plane early set up your area um, put your bags in the overhead bins all that stuff and then the parent with the baby boards at the last minute and the baby's not sitting on the plane getting antsy now, if you happen to have two babies, I am not at that point just yet, or maybe ever, but if you happen to have two babies with you, yes, they will make you, if I am understanding this correctly, they will make you sit one parent, one baby, so you'll have to have two window seats probably. Or if it's a bigger plane, you could each have an aisle seat sort of next to each other. Please remember that wherever you sit on the plane with your baby, it's all gonna be okay. Most people, 99% of people are very understanding. We've actually yet to encounter someone who is very mean or anything like that. Let me know if you have had bad encounters down below in the comments. I hope this hasn't happened to you. Um, babies are people too and deserve respect and to exist in public spaces and be able to fly just like the rest of us. Go for it, go with confidence. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be a lot of fun and I will see you in my next video.